Although in our presentations, we were traveling from Brazil to Kenya, but I think in uh, tobacco traveled from Brazil to Asia first, and then came to Africa. So we can see that. Yeah, in terms of timing, I think tobacco is also shifting from continent to continent, and uh, this is happening. We have been experience of 40 years of tobacco farming in Bangladesh, but what we say now, Bangladesh is a very good, fertile, uh, food-producing country. You know, we can produce a lot of food, diverse food, and tobacco is not a food crop. So that's the first thing. And anything we do, in the land, uh, a food crop, it creates food insecurity. Like uh, in the picture, you know, like pulses, um, uh, wheat, a lot of vegetables, everything is gone in the areas where tobacco is grown. Um, just uh, to tell you, as uh, Jacob has said, that this study was actually initiated because a farmer in one tobacco growing area told us that uh, they were not able to grow food crops anymore because of excessive tobacco cultivation in his area. So we took up this study and ADRC supported that and we did that from 2006 and up to 2011. So now Bangladesh has uh, uh, almost 30 years intensive tobacco cultivation, but actually uh, it started even before in some areas. And they, those who were growing for a longer time, they got the impression or felt that they cannot come out of it. So the study was actually to see whether this is possible to, uh, for those farmers who are no more able to a group tobacco, good quality tobacco, they are losing. On the other side, they are also uh, losing because they are not able to produce food. So the context is, of course, FCTC. Um, and tobacco, we had some local variety tobacco, which is which used to be used as a, like a smokeless tobacco, cherry tobacco, locally very little used. And some, uh, you know, uh, for smoking as well among the indigenous communities. But the tobacco that is grown on a commercial basis in large scale as monocrop is a non native plant. And that is the, uh, for, uh, like Nicotina tobacco or Nicotina rustica. So those are the two varieties that we are growing and those are actually promoted by the company. <coughs> you know, in our statistics at least, they are showing tobacco, like uh, four, six uh, cash crops, uh, sugar cane, uh, tea. Uh, you know, tobacco is there as a cash crop, they say, because it's only done to sell and to earn money. But we uh, we have found that it is not even a cash crop. It is not a food crop and not even a cash crop. It is not even an, a, a raw material for an industry that is necessary for the people. So they are like cotton. If you grow cotton, you will make clothes out of it. But tobacco, you are producing cigarette and that is injurious to health, you know. So, um, it's not uh, something that is desirable crop. And also, you know, it shows uh, when, you know, uh, the company talks about green fields, you know, because tobacco is the uh, kind of crop where leaf is the harvest. You are, you are actually harvesting the leaves. You are not harvesting uh, uh, fruit or, or any kind of grain out of it. it is, from the beginning of the harvesting time, it is the leaf that is your crop. 
So, and company is trying to, you know, this is a, a, a British American tobacco company, Billboard, but they are talking about Shobuje Shamaruhu, it's a Bengali word, and it says, it's a green, plenty of green around, is it? And green means environment, green is very good, you know, so they try to deceive people. And this green, you know, I'm very sorry that when we talk about environment, we need to think of green. But this is the green that is detrimental to health, they, you know, and also harmful to health. The tobacco varieties that are in Bangladesh are mainly a few cute Virginia, and there is one for Jati and Burley also. But British American Tobacco Company is you know, really promoting this SCB in Bangladesh. It used to be, in the beginning, they used to import SCBs in Bangladesh, but now um, they are exporting it. So um, it's uh, one of the exporting crops, and uh, they want to show that Bangladesh can earn a lot of money from there. So at present we found that among the six, uh, we have out 64 districts in Bangladesh, but out of 64 districts, the in the tobacco is grown. This is according to government statistics, but we actually we find it is in more districts because they shift from one area to another. Uh, government statistics shows it is in 16 districts, and in 73,811 acres. And interestingly, as Jacob was uh, talking about um, number of farmers, if you want to look at the number of farmers, there is no statistics. You only can get how many acres of land is under tobacco cultivation. But um, we uh, did our own finding, and we found that British American Tobacco Company alone controls 25,000 farming families and there are about 100,000 farmers under tobacco population. And uh, there are, uh, you know, Bangladesh, uh, uh, the way it is increasing, uh, the, this uh, land that is uh, taken away by the tobacco cultivation is actually taking land out of food production. That is clear directly. This is the season now where we are supposed to be growing uh, lentils, vegetables, oil seeds, rice, a number of food crops. And this is a very good season for farmers. And this is the time when tobacco comes and takes away the land. And Virginia, it's not in Bangladesh, it is in the US. So if Virginia has to, Virginia should have remained in Virginia, where it is coming to us. So, and just, um, I, although I didn't make an introduction to Bangladesh, I, I hope you know where Bangladesh is. When people see me in Sari, they ask, are you from India? And I refuse to say yes or no, because they should know where Bangladesh is an independent country, you know, and anybody wearing sari should not mean that we should be India, but India is our neighbor country, that's for sure. Um, initially, you know, British American Tobacco Company came in this region, in the northern part of Bangladesh, which is very fertile um, land. But then when the soil was depleted, they came to this area, which was the Padma, you know, basin, a very fertile land. So they came, after soil depletion, they came to Kushti. And so this was our research area. And they are at, still there, although many lands have been, you know, depleted. And then now, they are jumping to the hill tracks, Chitang hill tracks, mostly because of this river, which is, uh, as when Jacob was showing, I was feeling almost like, um, uh, feeling crying, because we have a very important river for the Chitang hill tracks, which has uh, hills around, 
ein wenig verteilen. <lacht> very fertile land on the sides and people's livelihood is dependent on this thing. And so the company, after soil was depleted in Kustia and there were no more trees for the curing of leaves, they just went to the hilly areas with forest so that they can easily get uh, the So you can see that among the six very important regions for tobacco growing. Uh, in the Chitang Hill tracks where the hilly area is here, the group is very you know, high, you know. And as uh, uh, Jacob was also showing in his uh, area that wherever you have tobacco, the hills are naked. <laughs> There are no more trees in there. So you, in Kushtia, you know, you will see village after village, but they used to have very, very old trees. And now every village looks like a young village because they have new trees and the old trees are out there. So there are no more trees. So one learning issue is that um, it's increasing at an alarming day because there is no regulation at the cost of the intrusion in land suitable for production of food crops. They are not going to any other land. They are going to the land where food is grown. And we found that actually it is increasing after, particularly after 2006. They were increasing it and uh, Suddenly, you know, I think company realized that there was less interest among farmers because it was not productive anymore, or they were in debt and they were finding a lot of problems. Suddenly, company comes and offered a very high price per kilogram, which is 135 taka, like almost uh, more than one euro, uh, one and a half euro. And, um, per kilo, and that is quite good price for the farmers for, compared to other crops. But uh, so there were a lot of farmers became interested, new farmers interested, and started growing tobacco. But they failed to keep their promise. You know? When more farmers started growing tobacco, and they took their leaves to the company, company did not pay the price they promised. Because there is no written document that will say that we will pay this price if we bring it. So companies did not uh, pay the price and it was much less than even like tax 65, which was almost half of the price they uh, offered. And then the company uh, farmers were very angry. These are the effigies were found in the trees where it is actually symbolizing the company agent, you know, with pants and shirt. Our, our farmers usually wear lungis, and pants and shirt means, you know, somebody coming with motorcycle, like, you know, company person. And he's given a, a lamp in hand so that he can see his way out of the village, you know, if it is night time. And also, they were very, very angry. And, there were also cases when we heard that some farmers wanted to commit suicide because of the fear, of the debt that they would not be able to cover from the money they would receive. Then next year again we found that farmers reduced tobacco production because so it happens like this. One year it grows more, another year it is less. This is kind of thing. So the whole issue that tobacco is profitable is actually unique. Because it is nothing but some fumes. You know, as you can see, this man was actually wondering that he will get all these notes, but finally um, it is a smoke because it's a, it is a company crop. Until profit is for the company for the farmers. And now we find that even as tourism, you know, in the brochure there, 
promoting uh, Bangladesh as a tobacco growing country. So come to Bangladesh, Bangladesh tobacco is very good. So this is what they do. And uh, you know, we find the smokers like the tobacco of Rampu. Rampu is one of the area where they used to do the tobacco. But I want to show this thing, you know, the tricks is here. You know, this is the company car. You know, you see, this, uh, we actually took off the name so that we do not want to target particular company. There are about seven or eight companies besides the British American Tobacco Company. And what they do, they recruit the farmers under the car and they put in, in the bag what they gave at the time of giving the car, like fertilizer, so much, you know, uh, pesticides, so much. But they do not put the price on the side. What they do, when they come back to sell the uh, leaves, then they put the price as they want. And farmers do not even have any control, you know, because they already produce for them. And tobacco is a kind of, uh, I don't, I refuse to call it a crop. It's something that um, you cannot sell to anybody else except the company. So it's not a normal market product. So you have to, uh, Take it and as uh, um, uh, Jacob was showing that uh, otherwise you will have to store it at home, which is even more dangerous. So they sell it at any price uh, they are offered. And it's not a farmer's crop. We, um, the farmers have not decided to produce this crop on their own decision and uh, this is not their choice. And uh, but they are allured by the companies with various offers like uh, we will give you, you know what they do from August, September when there is a lean season and people have less money in hand, companies come and pay in advance cash money to the people and they get stuck. So it is like a trap. We wanted to also show that how it affects like major, uh, you know, if you are growing tobacco, then actually from October they start and goes up to April. And, but it actually overlaps either as a planting season or as a harvesting season. So although it is a nine month crop, it actually doesn't allow you to grow other crops, so rest of the time your land is either remain fallow or you are doing something that is not a food crop or something does not fall into the crop cycle of the uh, farmers. So like this, you know, uh, after harvesting of the crops, some farmers even find it so expensive that they do not even can hire a labor to take these roots out of the field because by that time they, they, are, they have lost the other seasons for other crops. So anyway, it doesn't pay to, uh, you know, use any labor for that. Environmental degradation, too much fertilizer and pesticide use, you know, and uh, we can show you, you know, we collected all these packets from the tobacco fields. And uh, there are 47 different kinds, and they use any uh, pesticide which is bad or harmful. And they justify by saying that because this is not a food crop, so it's no problem, you know, people are not eating. So it has, and 24 companies are involved, small companies, big companies. And it's interesting that when we are talking against tobacco, farming, we find these company people are also, um, you know, unhappy. So, so there are these stakeholders who are, you know, and deforestation is really serious. And in the company card, when I showed you the company card, there is one very tiny little writing in British American Tobacco Company card that child labor is prohibited. But you can see that even 
uh, from August they start collecting wool and this uh, picture when they were, we were taken only one tree was left in one hill maybe it is not there now every house has this collection of firewood and it's a serious issue hazards to the health human health is the same as we were all talking about i want to talk about this woman for example you know the women have to sit in front of this bird 60 to 72 hours at a time she can only get off if she has to go to washroom or for eating and at that time she just asks somebody else to sit and during this time we found among other health problems she is suffering from mental tension because she is told that if you are not able to do this firewood uh, giving the firewood in a uniform way the quality of the leaf will be bad and therefore we will not get the right press because according to grades they may not get the right press and so she is always you know, intention that whether she is doing the right thing. Sometimes when they have shortage of firewood, she even goes to the bedroom to take out of the wood of the bed, bed you know. Because they cannot afford to have a gap in between. So that is, and this you can see, you know, like women, uh, miscarriage of women who are doing this and exposed to you know, such things are there. Child labor is a serious, serious issue. You can see that these children cannot, uh, like from this, now is an annual exam time in the primary schools and um, high schools. So if the children are going to schools, they are not able to even appear at exams. And at the time of curing of the leaves, it is secondary high school final exam, which is very important in school exam, and at the time, at that time, many uh, children have to drop off from school and cannot afford to go to school. We were just trying to show that the way tobacco has replaced, uh, you know, our major rice crops, uh, it's called almond, boro rice and winter ruby crops, is really, really affecting our staple food crops. And it's really... Um, large numbers. Although if you look at the entire statistics of the uh, land used and the food crop and land used and the tobacco, the percentage is not very high. But the way it is moving from one area to the other and the way it is degrading the soil for growing other food crops, it is I think uh, a serious problem. So we cannot afford to uh, have this you know, tobacco in our land where three, you know, our land is available for crop uh, cultivation all throughout the year. You know, it's, it's a different time, different rice. We have about 15,000 varieties of rice. We used to have, but now it has reduced. Now, Krishi has now 3,000 varieties of rice. And it, can, it has grown in different times of the year. But when tobacco is there, in the area where tobacco is there, nothing is happening. So the very clear thing is, more tobacco in one area is less food in this area. And um, uh, lag areas in, in, the, in the areas uh, where tobacco is cultivated, pulse, spice, potato, sugar, you know, are not grown anymore. And so, you know, uh, even a government study, Agriculture Institute of Manishi, they are saying that they have a yearly production deficit of 250,000 metric tons, and which is a very important crop and is protein source for poor people. And now we are importing it. We used to be exporter of that crop. So, um, Basically, we want to um, say that um, there is no um, doubt that tobacco is grown in the food land area and when it is done there, it is 
directly impacting on the food crops. So that's it.